give me a thumbs up in the comments if you remember the naturalist and conservationist David Bellamy. As a kid growing up in the 80s, I remember him passionately talking about nature on kids TV. And also, I always seem to be sending off for some poster or something from the back of a cereal cereal packet. Now, one of the posters that I remember getting was one about the bees in the UK. Did you know that there are over 250 species of bees in the UK alone? Now, we always think of bees as living in hives, producing honey, but actually 90% of our bees are called solitary bees, which, as the name suggests, they don't live in a hive, but rather live on their own, but sometimes in the same area, like in a colony. Now, each one of these bees um, has a specific place um, that they lay their eggs. So they normally burrow into maybe soil, sand, cliff faces, into wood. You may have some bamboo sticks in your bee hotel or in your bug hotel um, that, that they burrowed into. They also burrow into clay and mortar. And we can help our bee populations by making bee bricks. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do on the virtual village hall this morning. Now, it's quite quick, it's quite messy, and it's not pretty, but it works. And if you put these in a nice, sheltered, sunny, warm place in your garden, you'll have solitary bees coming along, filling them up with pollen and nectar, laying their eggs, um, and then sealing them over. And then in the spring, about this sort of time, you might actually see some of these solitary bees emerging. Um, the bees will emerge, they will pollinate our flowers and, the, and our food, which um, counts for about a third of the food population in the world. And they will just continue that cycle again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop you down and I'm going to show you how to make these lovely bee bricks. So there's a few things that you're going to need. You're going to need a nice old bucket for mixing. Um, I'm going to wear gloves today just because it's a bit cold and wet here and I really don't fancy getting my hands wet but absolutely go ahead um, and you can you can just go dive in straight with your hands just make sure you wash them thoroughly afterwards and also this is a really good one for children especially as we're coming up to the Easter holidays you might like to do this as an activity and they will love it because they can and get stuff from the garden and they can get really messy as well. So you're also going to need um, some clay soil. So I actually live on chalky soil. Um, if, you if you don't live on clay soil, if you can't just get it straight from your garden, um, either ask someone that does live on clay soil um, or if you don't have a garden, then you can use a mixture of say like compost, which is here, or just soil from the garden. Um, and also you can use air dry clay. So this is some air dry clay that I actually, um, it, it went hard. If you remember at the end of the last year, I made lots of, I showed you on the virtual village hall, how to make lots of different clay items for your tables, for decorations, for presents. Now, one of those packets um, got, got, I didn't actually wrap it up properly. And so it became quite dry. So all I did, I just refreshed it in water and I've got this clay back again, and that's what I'm going to use. It was actually the black salt, but you can use any color of the air dry clay. Um, and I'm gonna mix that in with my soil. So mix it a ratio of one part to one part. So I've got a cup of soil or garden compost, and then a cup of my clay. I'm also gonna need some hay or dry grasses. Gonna need a handful of sand some water that's just going to make sure that it all mixes together nicely you'll need a stick or a pencil so about the same size of a pencil we don't want the holes too big we want them just right for the bees to get in there and feel nice and safe um, and also you might want to use a mold or something like that rather than if you didn't want to create your own shaped bee brick so you can use something like a juice carton that's been cleaned out or I've got here a milk bottle and I'll show you how to do use this if you want to make a mould. Just make sure that at least one side that you're going to use is going to be either 6 to 12 centimetres deep. That will give the bee enough 
enough of length to burrow in and to lay everything lay their eggs put their pollen in the nectar for that larvae to feed on and then that bee will safely emerge in the spring let's get mixing so we have our old bucket here i'm going to stand up to do this so i'm going to put my gloves on and i'm going to start by mixing the soils so this is the soil so just make sure number one there's no cat poo in it obviously make sure there's no worms and um, take out any large stones and so we can put those to one side There we go, so that's our soil in. We then want to put our clay in. As I said, if you live on clay soil or you know someone that does, you could just use the soil straight from the ground. Let's just give that a mix together. I live on chalk, I live on chalky ground, so um, I've had to add this air dry clay. just so that we it, it fixes together. That's great. Then we want to put in a handful of sand. Mix that together. So effectively what we're doing is making um, like a mixture they call cob. You may, if you've sort of seen any um, house building shows or grand designs, then cob is what they used to make buildings out of in medieval times. So it's just this mixture of clay, sand and hay. Um, and bees over the years have decided it's quite good for them to lay their eggs in, these solitary bees. So if you're just joining us, you may wonder what we're doing. So we are making bee bricks today, just using some natural products. So I've just mixed my clay soil with sand and then I'm just going in with some dried grasses and hay. Mixing that all in together. We'll just put a bit more in. You don't want too much. Just enough break it up a little bit more there we go then we just want to add water they so just add a little bit to start with and see how that goes mixing it up my soil is quite wet anyway because um, it rains quite a lot in the night here So just put enough water in just to bind it and to bring it all together. And actually, I think that's going to be enough. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side while I show you how to create a mould if you wanted to. Okay, so for the mould, here I have just an old... An empty milk bottle plastic milk bottle and I'm just going to take the top off using a sharp pair of scissors and use this part as my mould there we go and then I just want to take one top off, oh sorry, one side off, I'll leave that on, I can just bend that over, and cut that quarter. Okay, I'm going to put my gloves back on. nice and messy and then I'm going to add my clay soil sand and hay mixture just into that just to help me 
make a mold. Press it down so it fills into the corners. And then I can just slip that out. Let's put it on a flat surface. And then I'll just shape that up a little bit more. <laughs> oh, lovely and messy. And there we have our bee brick. Now all we need to do is to put these holes in. So I'm just going to use a stick, but you could use an old pencil. And as I said, although there are solitary bees, so they lay their eggs in singular holes, they do like to live in colonies. And if the conditions are just right, you'll get lots of them. And I can just do one more there. Make sure that went all the way through. So make sure the depth is between six and 12 centimeters, which I've done there. And some of these bees, these solitary bees, have beautiful names like the hairy footed flower bee. Uh, there's the patchwork leaf cutter, red mason bee, and just so many more. They've got such great names and they're quite overlooked really because we often think about honeybees, bumblebees, um, but these are just as important to pollination. So that's going to need to dry. Um, it's probably going to take a couple of weeks to dry, so put it somewhere warm, somewhere where the air can circulate. Once you've got a bit of a crust over the top you might like to turn it so that it can get all dry underneath and then once it's dry you can put it outside either into an existing bee hotel so if you've got a smaller one like this you can just pop it into a bee hotel um, or you could make a few of them stack them up together and just make sure it's in a sheltered sunny warm place somewhere that you might like to be really some so that the bees will stay dry and warm they'll be able to lay their eggs and as i say the whole pollination cycle life cycle starts again so as i said it was going to be quick messy and not very pretty but it really is important to do our bit for the bees whether we live in the countryside or we live in urban areas but not just this we can think about um plants and flowers that are good for pollinators so when you're looking when you're at the nursery or you're buying seeds for example choose flowers that have an open position so we, we see lots that are that are bred for lots of frilly leaf, uh, frilly petals but actually the bees can't get inside those so make sure that the flower has an open position so you can see the center nicely so think of those daisy like flowers the cosmos um uh, lavender is a great one for bees as well. That brings lots of pollinators in. Um, at the moment, we've got the comfrey coming out. Um, you've probably seen bees on the daffodils. So really just think about those open um, flowers that can be easily pollinated. And ivy is also an important um, plant to grow too because we get some late pollen. Was it early pollen? Some late, I think it's late, quite late. That's right, yeah, the, the ivy is quite a late pollinator. Um, and also there's a solitary bee that's called an ivy bee as well. So you'll be helping all of those. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that's given you some ideas that you can do for your own garden or if you've got children off school this for the next couple of weeks for the Easter break, then I hope you can have a go at making those bee bricks. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care and goodbye.